Hello, so I'm back with Fundamentals of Case Management Practice, Skills for the Human Services, 5th edition by Nancy Summers. Um, this is Chapter 2, Ethics and Other Responsibilities for Human Service Workers. What is moral? Moral choices have to do with culture and socialization. What we feel is right, often tied to religion. We generally feel guilty when we violate our moral code. What is ethical? Generally is represented in ethical codes, developed for specific professions, often required to maintain professional status, violations result in sanctions and loss of privileges. What is legal? May embody moral and ethical codes. Uh, we are talking about the law. Violations are violations of the law, which is a criminal offense. Courts make decisions about the consequences of illegal behavior. Um, these can overlap. What you find to be immoral may not be embodied in, in any ethical or legal code. Um, behavior is deemed unethical in your professional code. Maybe behaviors you never considered either immoral or illegal. Some behaviors are prohibited in both ethical and legal codes. It may be obviously immoral to you. Dual relationships. A dual relationship occurs when you and a client to whom you are giving service have more than one relationship. Um, make every effort to avoid dual relationships. Your position gives you a position of power. It is possible to exploit or give the impression of exploiting this power. When in this situation where a dual relationship cannot be avoided, give the client a choice about continuing services with you. Gifts from client. It is best to avoid accepting gifts from clients. Sometimes clients give gifts with the expectation of receiving special consideration in the future. Um, sometimes, however, they are given out of gratitude and a need to stop always being on the receiving end. Accepting the gift. If you accept a gift from a client, document the offer and how you responded in the client's chart. Always attempt to accept the gift on behalf of the entire agency rather than as a personal gift to you. Acceptance can pose a conflict of interest. Sexual or romantic relationships. Sexual or romantic relationships with clients are almost always illegal and always completely unethical. For clients, the respectful and concerned um, relationship they form with a case manager may be the first time they've experienced such a relationship. For a case manager who is facing difficulties in his or her own life, a sensitive and concerned client is appealing. Who is always responsible? It is the case manager's job to make sure that the sexual or romantic relationships do not develop. Relationships with clients are exploitive and can add to a client's emotional burdens and will always involve a power differential. One person is the helper with all the answers and resources, while the other is the person with all the problems. Avoiding values conflicts. Be respectful of attitudes and lifestyles that differ from your own. Never practice prejudice towards minorities, those with disabilities, or those with differing sexual preferences. Always give your best service to your client, even when you disagree with the person. Never attempt to change a client's values to, con to coincide with your own. Um, this is why I've actually taken it upon myself to learn about different cultures so that I can be respectful of that person's culture and religion and lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So self-determination. Clients have the right to self-determine. This includes the right to research their diagnosis and treatment and ask questions about it, the right to make mistakes, the right to decide when and for how long they will use the service of the agency or engage in treatment. Government and other funding sources are asking case managers to talk to clients about what clients envision for themselves in the future beyond grappling with social and emotional problems. Informed consent. A client always has the right to consent um, or withdraw from services. The client has the right to be informed about side effects, adverse effects, um, negative consequences that could occur as a result of treatment, medication, or procedures. Any risk that might occur if the client um, elects not to follow through with treatment or services, what is being offered, including what the treatment is, what will be included, and potential risk and benefits. Any alternate treatments or procedures available. What constitute informed consent in three parts? Capacity, the client has the ability or capacity to make clear 
competent decisions in his or her own behalf, comprehensive of information, the client clearly understands what is being told to him or her, to make sure that this is so, give the information carefully and check to see if the client understands what you have told him or her, um, voluntariness, the client gives his or her consent freely with no coercion um, or pressures from the agency or the professional offering the service. Confidentiality. This is both an ethical practice and a legal right. Ask clients for their permission before sharing their case with colleagues unless this sharing takes place in normal supervision or in agency planning. If asked on the phone about a client, request a release of information form and indicate you will see if the client is known to your agency when the form is received. Do not discuss your cases with relatives, friends, even when leaving out the names. Minimum necessary rule. Use the minimum necessary rule. Only release the information, a minimum amount of information needed for the other agency to fulfill the responsibility to the client. When you can break confidentiality. When you must warn others of possible harm by the client. When the client needs professional services and cannot obtain these voluntarily. When protecting clients from harming themselves. When you are attempting to obtain payment for services when you are obtaining a professional um, consultation from your regular supervisor in the course of regular supervision. Health Insurance Probability and Accountability Act, HIPAA, um, passed in 1996, requires agencies to inform clients of the agency's privacy and confidentiality procedures. Security, requires agencies to protect health information from inappropriate accesses by others. Privacy, the client's right to keep certain information private. Um, more on HIPAA. Uh, it stipulates what must be stipulated on a release of information form. IHI, or indefinable health information. Clients have the right to ask that this information be restricted. Clients have the right to access their files, make copies of their records, and make corrections or additions to their files in these, if these are accurate. Social networking. Social networking is a way to connect. <laughs> with those who share our experiences at work. Away from the work site, it helps to be able to talk frankly about what happens. Social networking sites are not secure. Comments made can be read by others and misconstructed. It is unethical to talk about clients in any form uh, where confidentiality is not guaranteed. Privilege communication is a legal concept. Uh, protecting the right of the client to withhold information in a court proceeding. When you, you can reveal information. You can reveal information about the client in a court proceeding when you are acting in a court appointed capacity such as guardian or payee. A child under 16 is believed to be the victim of a crime such as sexual or physical abuse. You determine the client's needs to be hospitalized. The client has told you of his intentions to commit a crime or harm himself or another. Mandated and reported. All states have laws requiring professionals to report the abuse or neglect of children. Um, some states have laws requiring professionals to report the abuse, neglect, or exploitation of older people as well. Um, what does your state require? Even where there are no laws mandating that you report elder abuse ethically, you have an obligation to do so. Involuntary commitment criteria. Criteria for committing someone against his or her will are the person poses a danger to himself or others and one of the following or more. Severe mental illness or severe mental illness that is acute. Um, unable to function and thus unable to provide self-care. Has refused to, to sign a voluntary commitment. There are known treatment um, that can be applied once the person is committed. The commitment adheres to the principle of at least restrictive treatment setting. Ethical responsibilities of a client. Don't burden clients with your problems or tell clients worse has happened to you. Don't ask a client to meet your needs. Asking them to buy Avon from you, um, buy insurance from a friend, starting an insurance business. Don't insist that a client do what you think the client should do. Don't insist that your solutions are the only solutions. Don't continue to treat the client as being 
in need of your services when the client has grown beyond needing these services. Protecting the client's self-esteem. When you diminish another person's self-esteem, you are stealing what feels, what feelings of confidence and self-worth they actually they may have. Some workers think they can justify mistreatment of clients because the clients are difficult, don't follow through, call too often, etc. Many clients already feel unsure, vulnerable, and awkward over needing help. Um, you have a responsibility never to diminish another person's sense of self-esteem or self-worth. Four reasons clients are mistreated. There are four reasons clients are often mistreated. The worker is unpleasant with everyone. The worker needs to feel superior and have power over the client. The worker has no supervisory support and feels isolated with unpredictable behavior or unfamiliar problems and develops an us versus clients attitude. The worker is trying to control unpredicted behavior with verbal or physical aggression because the worker lacks training and support in other ways to handle the behavior. How we steal client self-esteem. We steal a client self-esteem by being rude um, or demeaning, ignoring the client, refusing to return calls or acknowledge the client's concerns, de um, rid ridiculing or demeaning the client, Forcing clients to perform actions that the client is not capable of performing. Impaired workers. A social service worker is considered impaired when he or she is unable to function effectively due to substance abuse, mental illness, or personal problems. If a coworker becomes impaired, start by talking to the worker. If, you, if need be, talk to your supervisor. Do not allow clients to become endangered. If you become impaired, take steps to resolve personal problems promptly. Um, do not work with clients if you are not able to function effectively. Um, so this is it. Thank you for listening this time. Um,